here at the OS Game Visitor Center. Let's go inside and see what we can learn. There are over 800 cattle breeds, but only 8 are categorized as dairy breeds. Four of the most popular dairy breeds in the U.S. are Holsteins, Jersey, Browns, Swiss, and Guernseys. If Murphy was a Dale dairy cow, I think he'd be a Guernsey. Moo! Here, here at the OSU, OSU Dairy, they have Holsteins and Jerseys. Here are some important terms. Cow are adult female cattle. Heifers are young female cattle that had not have had a baby. Baby cattle are called calves. Male cattle are called bulls. Only cow give milk. And the happier the cow is, the more the more milk it will produce. So dairy farmers work really hard to keep their cows healthy, clean, and without any stress. In a dairy farm, you'll see all sorts of things to make cows more comfortable. Fans and misting systems keep them cool. Flying control systems limit pests. Waste flushing system and keep the barns clean. There's even an automatic scratcher. It's almost like a spa. Dairy production is important because it's used to make things like milk, butter, cheese, yogurt, cream, whipped cream, ice cream, and more. If it weren't for cows, we wouldn't have any chocolate malt. Let's find out how this is done. The barn is where the cows live. It is covered and has the comfort feature we discussed before. They get a specially form formulated diet mixed right here on the farm. This barn has four bays for feed ingredients. One is bran and looks like this. One is cotton seed, which is high protein and, and fat. The cows love it. One is soy protein from soybeans. One is milled corn. Front end loaders scoop up these ingredients and load it into this machine. There, there it is mixed with hay and water. After it is mixed, it gets laid down just outside the stall within easy reach of the cows, keeping it outside the pen keeps it clean. Cows can eat more than a hundred pounds of feed per day. Cows can also drink up to 40 gallons of fresh water per day. That's a whole bathtub full of water. When the cows are well cared for, they produce milk and lots of it. Let's see how cows are milked. I'm going to show you a traditional milking parlor, and then I'm going to blow your mind with a new way to milk cows. Before automation, all cows had to be milked by hand into a bucket. Some cows are still milked that way. My granddad was really good at milking. My dad isn't. Milking automation has been around for over 100 years and it has evolved a lot over that time. Though every milking parlor is different, there are four main designs. The parallel, the tandem, the rotary, and the herringbone. Oklahoma State has a double six herringbone design that works like this. Cows enter from either side in batches of six. They go into a milking station and are milked, then they exit through this path. The floor of the parlor is sunk, allowing the operators to easily access the cows. Here is what it actually looks like. Currently, the herd size is about 120 cows, 
and about half are milked here in this parlor. The cows get milked twice a day, once at four in the morning and again at four in the afternoon. After each milking session, the parlor is cleaned. Immediately prior to each milking session, the piping, tubing, and pumps are run through a washing and sanitizing cycle that cleans all the inside surfaces. New filters are installed between the milking stations and the collection tank. Let's follow the cows through the milking parlor. First, they are brought in from their barn. A mechanical gate closes behind them and keeps the waiting cows in a holding area. Each cow has two ear tags. One displays her unique identification number. The other has her identification number on an RFID tag. As the cow enters the milking parlor, an RFID tag reader senses which cow is entering. By knowing the order the cows enter, it knows which milking station the cow will be in. Once the side has six cows, the entrance gate is closed. Each of the four nipples on a cow's udder is called a teat. Each teat is cleaned by dipping it into a disinfectant solution. Then cups are attached to each teat. A soft rubber liner is the only part of the milking machine that touches the cow. A vacuum creates a pulsating action that draws the milk out. Milk flows through these four tubes into a bigger tube, which has a flow meter calibrated to read pounds of milk. The control unit knows which cow is in the milking station and records how much milk she produced. This information is very important to herd management. From each station, all of the milk flows through a filter to the storage tank, where it is later picked up by a truck to haul it to a processing dairy, where it will be pasteurized and turned into dairy products. When the machine senses that the milking is over, it releases the cups from the teats, and a chain pulls the cup apparatus up, keeping it clean. Additionally, the operator sprays the milking station clean between each cow being milked. The operator also dips each teat again, this time with an iodine-based solution that protects from infection. When the six cows on a side are all through, an exit gate opens and the cows file out of the parlor. More cleaning is done and the next batch of six cows are let in and the process repeats. The Jersey cows produce from 40 to 70 pounds of milk each day. The Holstein cows produce from 60 to over 100 pounds of milk each day. In addition to the volume of milk produced, the amount of fat or cream in each cow's milk can vary too. Typically, Jersey cows have higher fat content, but genetic improvements are closing the traditional gap. The average Americans drink 18 gallons of milk each year. I'm above average for that. Concerned about antibiotics in your milk? You don't need to be. First of all, modern dairy farming has greatly reduced the use of antibiotics in their operations. Still, there are times when they need to treat a cow to keep it healthy. When they do, it's for very specific and limited reasons. While the cow is undergoing treatment, it is separated from the main herd. It is also banded with these red bands on its hind legs to remind the operator to divert the milk. The cow still needs to be milked, but that milk is diverted from the main collection system and disposed of. It never mingles with the other milk. If it did, the entire tank of milk would have to be dumped. Furthermore, every batch of milk gets tested for the presence of antibiotics at multiple points along the supply chain. The dairy industry is very stringent about consumer safety because they want us all to have confidence in the products we consume. You have to be wondering, how is the rest of the herd milked? Let me introduce you to the robot where cows milk themselves. Here in the free range barn, the cow can walk over to the robot milking station anytime they feel like it. 
When they enter, the gate closes behind them. The control system reads their RFID tag number. If they haven't been milked in the past six hours, it feeds them a pellet and starts the milking process. To keep the cows from circling through too often, if it has been less than six hours, the, the robot generally kicks them out of the sh- machine without getting a pellet. The robot process is very similar to how the other cows were milked. First, the teats are cleaned. The robot uses a camera and arm to locate each teat and attach the cups. In this machine, the flow is measured from each teat. Typically, 40% of the milk comes from the front teats and 60% from the rear. When milking is over, the cups detach and the cow is cleaned again. The exit gate opens and all of the data is recorded. The gate reset and the robot waits for the next cow to make a visit. The second, the system has a separate collection tank and sanitizing systems. The operators get alerts when problems occur and can pull reports whenever they need to analyze herd performance. Robot milking. Who knew? My grandpa's jaw would drop. In addition to the milking herd, There are other cattle on the farm, too. Here are some hutches where the youngest calves are kept. When they get a little older, they get to be in a pen together. Go for a lick. (laughs) This is a field for the dry cows. You can think of them as being on maternity leave. For about 60 days before their due date, they are stopped being milk so they can rest. As they approach their delivery time, they are moved up to what is called the close-up pen. This lets the operators keep a closer eye on them and watch for signs of calving. Cows are pregnant for about 280 days, and they have a calf about every 12 to 13 months. Cows never take a day off, so there is work to do on a dairy farm every single day. Rain, snow or shine, hot or cold, weekends and holidays too. Somebody has to take care of cows, do the milking, do the cleaning, load trucks and maintain equipment and factories every single day. So raise your glasses of chocolate milk and say a toasted dairy farmer. We appreciate everything these men and women do. Thank you to everyone in the staff at o- at the OSSU State Farm. If you like my videos, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.